I'm Cadet Brian. And I'm Cadet Ken. And you've tuned in to Super Kid Academy. We're live in five, four, three, two, one! Super kids, did you know that there were two faith heroes in the Bible who played I spy? They did, and they were the ones who spied out the promises of God instead of the problems. Let's watch the broadcast today to find out who those faith heroes were. Hey there, super kids. I'm Senior Cadet Mateo. And I'm Cadet Ella, and we're super excited to start off this week's broadcast. And you know, one of our most amazing segments is a lesson on generosity. You know what? That reminds me. I got a little something for you. It's not my birthday? Yeah. Super kids, let's tune into lessons of generosity. Has any one of your brothers or sisters broken your favorite toys? Like this castle. It is missing the doors. I know it can be frustrating, but the Bible tells us to let go of unforgiveness. Mark 11, 24 through 25 says, I tell you, you can pray for anything, and if you believe that you received it, it will be yours. But wait you are praying first forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against so that your father in heaven will forgive your sins too being mad at others and our siblings keeps us from receiving god's best so today as as take time and talk to god and pray ask him if there is unforgiveness you need to let go of and remember that when you give, you don't only have to give money, but you can give forgiveness too. There's a joy in my heart that I can't 
can't contain when I hear how your son came to set me I am just parched. Well, you're in the right place because today we're doing a collab of In the Kitchen and In the Lab. Nice, let's go see if we can find some water. Super kids, grab your magnifying glasses. They're magnifying glasses? <laughs> yes, we're spying out Faith today. It's time for In, in the, the Kitchen, kitchen Lab. lab. We've been spying out Faith all month. And today, we're spying out a secret message with cranberry juice. Remember to wash your hands and ask an adult for help with this super top secret experiment. This is what you'll need. A pot, some water, cranberry juice, some baking soda, a coffee mug, some spoons, and some paintbrushes. Let's get started. Super kids, look who it is. <laughs> Lieutenant Reggie's here to help us with the experiment today. That's right. For our first step, I measured out two cups of cranberry juice and put it on our stove to boil. Make sure you stir it every few minutes, though, because it will stick to the pan. Next, we're going to take add one third cup of hot water with four tablespoons of baking soda. While you're pouring that, I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing it. Okay. That way, it'll be a nice consistency. Okay. It almost looks like milk. Yeah. It does look a lot like milk when you're done with it. Now we're gonna take our paintbrushes and we're gonna take our baking soda mixture and paint a picture or a message onto our pieces of paper. Okay, fun tip, if you want your paper to dry faster, you can use a hair dryer. But while ours dry, it's time for a super kid dance party. <laughs> Ta-da! Our pieces of paper look blank. That's right. For our next step, don't forget the cranberry juice. We're just about to use it. I'm gonna take it and pour it into a mug. Make sure you get adult help with this one, because it is hot. <laughs> why you need adult help, kids. <laughs> and we have a little bit of cranberry juice in our mug. And so we're going to take those paint brushes and paint over our message. Okay. Oh. It's busy. And it is very hot, so again, be very careful. It's because of the baking soda. It's not even red like I thought it was gonna be. So how's that looking? It doesn't look red like I thought it would be. It looks, it's kind of like, Green? <laughs> yeah. It is working though. Yeah. Mine's upside down. <laughs> See, you have no way of telling if your paper is going to be upside down or not until you paint it with the uh, juice. Because you can't see what's on it. Whoa, super kids. Mine says, You are kind. Mine says, Jesus loves you. This is really cool. Yeah. 
How does this work, Lieutenant Reggie? Well, it has to do with the acid found in the cranberry juice. I have the specifics right here in my notes. So the acid in the cranberry juice is called anthocyanin. Say that three times fast. Anthocyanin, anthocyanin, anthocyanin. 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 That's hard. That's a tongue twister. Yeah. The invisible ink that we wrote with had baking soda and water, so it creates what we call a base. It shows up as invisible whenever you write on a paper. Whenever you put the cranberry mixture on the paper, it's going to show up as red if you use enough or just as wet otherwise. But whenever it comes in contact with the baking soda, there's a chemical reaction that makes it look like that green-blue color. So what you see is anthocyanin changing its structure right before your very eyes, and that's why the ch color changes. It's also what happens whenever leaves change color in the fall. Whoa, so if I'm correct, the acid and the base is what causes the words to appear? That's right. Hmm, that's just like faith. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. That's a great point, Cadet Cadence. Just like whenever you use your faith for something, it's already there, but you can't see it. Whenever you wrote on this paper, you couldn't see what you wrote, but it was still there. But whenever you put the cranberry juice on it, you could see what you had written. And that's how our faith works. Faith is evidence of what we can't see. Whoa, there's, Super Kids, there's always something new to learn in, in the, the Kitchen, kitchen lab. lab. those faith heroes that wandered around in the desert for 40 years and spied out the promised land. You got it! It's Joshua and Caleb. God told Moses, it's time for the children of Israel to inherit the promised land. And then Moses chose 12 spies to go and spy it out. And Joshua and Caleb were part of that group. But 10 of those spies, uh, they had a lot of fear, a lot of doubts. Let's listen to their report in Numbers chapter 13, verses 25 through 27. It says, after exploring the land for 40 days, the men returned to Moses, Aaron, and the whole community of Israel at Kadosh in the wilderness of Paran. They reported to the whole community what they had seen and showed them the fruit that they had taken from the land. This was their report to Moses. Now, this is just 10 of the spies, not Joshua and Caleb. We entered the land you sent us to explore, and indeed, a bountiful country, a land flowing with milk and with honey. And here is the kind of fruit it produces. So these men, oh, look at all the grapes just falling. So good. And these men, they saw the promises. They saw the goodness of God, the honey, all the cows in the field. And remember, they were part living in a desert. I mean, the promised land was just a land where all of their dreams would come true, and they knew it. But look at what they said next in verse 28. But the people living there are powerful, and their towns are large and fortified. We even saw giants there, the descendants of Anak. So where these guys went wrong is they got their eyes more on the problems instead of the promises. And because of that, it caused a lot of fear and doubt in them. But look at what Caleb said in verse 30. But Caleb tried to quiet the people as they stood before Moses. Let's go at once to take the land, he said. We can certainly conquer it. Now what's amazing is that Caleb and Joshua, they saw the same giants and they saw the same promises, but they chose to look at it through a faith perspective, through the eyes of faith. And instead of spying on the giants, they turned their binoculars and spied on the promises. But verse 31 through 33, the other men who had explored the land, with him, they disagreed. We can't go up against them. They're stronger than we are. So they spread this report among the entire land of the Israelites. The land we travel through and explore will devour anyone who goes to live there. And all the people we saw there were huge. We even saw giants there, the descendants of Anak. And next to them, we felt like grasshoppers. And that's what they thought too. 
So they took this bad report, spread it among all of Israel, and they became fearful and doubted and were crying and complaining. And because of this, God said, look, this generation is not going to inherit the promise. They are going to die here in the wilderness but I'm going to honor the faith of Caleb and Joshua and the younger generation. And that's exactly what God did. Joshua later became their great leader and led them into the promised land. And look at what Caleb said right before entering the promised land in Joshua chapter 14, verses 11 through 12. He said, I am on this day as I was on the day that Moses sent me. Just as my strength was then, so is my strength now for war, both for going out and for coming in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain. You know what? Challenges, giants, mountains, they didn't intimidate Caleb. Why? Because he spied out the promises. His focus was correct. He had the right kind of 2020 vision. And Super Kids, in this faith series, we've talked a lot about giants of faith. But I want you to realize that every person of faith in the Word of God faced a giant. They faced a challenge. Think about it. Daniel faced the lion's den. Moses faced Pharaoh. Jesus faced the cross. Just because you live by faith doesn't mean you're going to not encounter challenges You will encounter challenges. You will encounter problems. But it's through faith and focusing your vision on the victory and on the promises of God that you will conquer and overcome every single time. So remember, Super Kids, don't spy out the problems, but spy out the promises. Kids, you have tuned in to Back to the Bible. You know, Judges 7 in our Super Kid Manual tells us the Bible story about Gideon and his worship. The Lord said to Gideon, you have too many warriors with you. If I let all of you fight the Midianites, the Israelites will boast to me that they saved themselves by their own strength. So tell the people, if you are scared, leave and go home. And 22,000 of them went home, leaving only 10,000 who were willing to fight. But the Lord still said to Gideon, there are still too many. Bring them down to the water and I will test them to see who will go with you. Gideon took his warriors down to the water and the Lord told him, divide the men into two groups. In one group, put all those who cup water in their hands and lap it up with their tongues like dogs. And the other group put all those who kneel down and drink with their mouths in the stream. Only 300 of the men drank with their hands. All the others got down on their knees and drank with their mouths in the stream. Then God told him that with these 300 warriors, I will give you victory. The Midianite camp was in the valley just below where Gideon was located. And that night, the Lord said, get up. Go into the Midianite camp, for I have given you victory over them. But if you are afraid to attack, go down to the camp with your servant. Listen to what the Midianites are saying, and you will be greatly encouraged. Then you will be eager to attack. So Gideon and his servants went down to the edge of the enemy camp. Gideon crept up just as a man was telling his friend about a dream. The man said, I had this dream, and in my dream, a loaf of barley bread came tumbling down into the Midianite camp. It hit a tent, turned it over, and knocked it flat. His friend answered, your dream can mean only one thing. God has given Gideon the victory. When Gideon heard this, he bowed in worship before the Lord. Then Gideon returned to the Israelite camp and shouted, get up, for the Lord has given you victory. He divided the 300 men into three groups and gave each man a ram's horn and a clay jar with a torch in it. He said to them, keep your eyes on me. When I come to the edge of the camp, do just as I do. As soon as I and those with me blow the ram's horns, blow your horns too all around the entire camp and shout for the Lord and for Gideon. 
It was just after midnight when they reached the edge of the Midianite camp. They blew the ram's horns and broke their clay jars, and they all shouted, a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. They stood around the camp and watched as all the Midianites rushed around in a panic, shouting as they ran to escape. They began fighting against each other, and Gideon's army had the victory because of the Lord. Thanks for tuning into Back to the Bible. Hey, Cadet Ella, do you know the most important part about being a super kid? No, tell me. It's the super kid creed. I don't think I've ever heard of it. Well, you know what? We're going to that segment now. Would you like to join us? Sure. What is a creed? If you've been in Super Kids for any amount of time, you've heard of our Super Kid Creed. We talked about the first eight lines of our creed in January, and now we're going to talk about the next eight lines, which say, I am full of wisdom and understanding. I lay hands on the sick and they recover. I lead people to Jesus. I do not lie. I am always quick to tell the truth. I do not steal. I'm a tither and a giver, not a taker. My father makes me wealthy. I do not complain. I work hard to help my family. Remember, a creed is something that tells what somebody believes and what they do with what they believe. And you can see in these eight lines several things that a super kid believes. First, a super kid knows how important it is to read their Bible, because that's the best way to get knowledge and wisdom. Then, in the next two lines, we see that a super kid does what Jesus said to do in the Great Commission, which is found in Mark chapter 16, verses 15 through 18. In it, he says, go to all the world and tell the good news to everyone. And he says, they that believe will be able to lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. So you see, a super kid also believes that everybody that they lay their hands on will be healed by God. Finally, we see in these lines that a super kid realizes that all of their money comes from God. So a super kid does all of their work like they're doing it for God himself. They don't complain about it and they work very hard. You see that all of your lines of your super kid creed come straight from the Bible and they're written in a way that tells you what you can do in every situation in life. Now you see why it's so important to learn about your super kid creed and you know what you're saying whenever you recite your super kid creed. Hey, Granny V. Today, I'm in search of detectives like myself. They were sent to spy out a promised land, but every time I get closer to finding my answer, my magnifying glass just keeps on magnifying the problems. Oh, sonny boy, that's the first problem. In order to find the promise, you can't focus on the problems. Okay, well, there are some good things in this case, like a lot of grapes, some very sweet honey, and even a lot of cows. Sounds like a sweet deal to me. It is. But whenever they went, they ran into a lot of giants and got really scared. Oh, well, when anyone focuses on the problems instead of the promises, fear comes in instead of faith. You know, that reminds me of the Bible story about Caleb and Joshua. You see, Moses sent out 12 spies to check out the land. And they came back, but only Caleb and Joshua had focused on the promise. The other 10, they focused on the problem and they died in the wilderness. But Joshua and Caleb, they eventually inherited the land because they focused on the promise. So whenever I spy out the promise instead of the problems, it'll help me unlock the case? That's right. Whatever promises God has given you in His Word, you can have them. Let's work out our faith with power confessions. Oh, yeah. What I ask for in prayer, I believe and I receive it. Okay. What I ask for in prayer, I believe and I receive it. I live by faith and not by sight. I live by faith and not by sight. I have faith, therefore I please God. I have faith and therefore I please God. Thanks for working out with us in the faith gym. Woo! Dude, I'm looking for you, Jesus Christ, and that's where I'm trying okay. to find you all around. I have, a, yeah. okay. I have a servant that needs to be healed. I can't, I can't move. I can't feel my legs. 
<laughs> and I need your help. I'll be there. Yeah, yeah I'm on my way right now. Let's go. Jesus, just say the word. Say the word, and it will happen to say to a servant. Now, let me say it again. Just say the word, and it will happen, and just do it. And when I tell people what to do, they do it. So I expect you to do the same. You said, what? Wow. Wow. I've been through all throughout Jerusalem. I've never seen faith like this before ever in my life. Oh, my God. I'm just, oh, wow. Wow. That is such great faith, Centurion. You, you really mean that, Jesus? Wow. Thank you. Oh, I had the faith. I had a great faith. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, wait, I can finally. Whoa. I can, I can finally hug my sheep. Whoa, I can dance with my sheep. Whoa, I'm healed. Thank you, Jesus. Tony, I'll never not hold you again. Hey, Super Kid, were you watching the broadcast today and thinking, how can I be friends with Jesus? It's as simple as saying your ABCs. In Romans chapter 10, verse 9, it says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So it's as simple as A, admit, B, believe, and C, confess. Super Kid, are you ready to pray that prayer with me? Are you ready, Cadet Isabella? Yes. Let's do it. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I believe you went to the cross. I believe you went to the cross. And died for me. And died for me. And you rose again. And you rose again. Be my Lord and Savior. Be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of all my sins. Forgive me of all my sins. And take my life. And take my life. And do something amazing with it. And do something amazing with it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Super kids, all of heaven right now is having a party. And we want to celebrate along with you. Parents, if that was your child's first time praying that prayer, we want to tell your kids congratulations. Send us an email to superkids at emic.org. We want to give them a certificate and plus something a little special too. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the family. family. Today we learned about spying on the promises instead of the problems. The Word of God tells us in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, And now, dear brothers, and now, dear super kids, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on those things that are true and honorable, right and pure, lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. The reason why Joshua and Caleb spied out the promises instead of the problems and received the promised land is because they had their focus in the right direction. They believed God. They had faith. And as you think about the good things of God, His Word, His promises, and you focus on those things, you will enter your promised land as well. Love you, super kids. Man, we've done a, a lot of amazing stuff today. You know, I'm, I'm really sad. We're signing off. There's no reason to be sad because the broadcast will be back next week. Nice. Signing off. Super Kid Academy, where ordinary kids do extraordinary things. Signing off for now. Thank you for watching Super Kid Academy at Eagle Mountain International Church. Kids, get your parents' permission and visit us on Instagram, Facebook, or at emic.org. We'll see you next time at Super Kid Academy.